Okay, then let's start. Um, Python 3. Uh, Python um, is really big for a project that's basically managed by all volunteers. Um, there are um, a lot of things that have been added to the software. This has grown over, over years, if not decades. And um, in that time, naturally, um, software acquires some baggage um, and the, the developers of Python decided to, about 10 years ago, they decided they wanted to streamline this, the programming language, make it more complicated. And, um, that would, but that would break some backwards comp compatibility. So they brought out version Python 3. It was 10 years ago. And it, it wasn't very well, uh, it took a while for, for people to adapt to that. Um, there were some, lots of people said that there was nothing wrong with Python 2, kept using Python 2. Um, it took a lot of time to get traction, but, um, but eventually uh, people start to switch over more and more. Um, most of the modules, um, have, if, if not all important modules, uh, are capable of uh, have versions for both Python 2 and Python 3. Um, and in fact, uh, because it is so tedious to maintain two different versions of the same module, um, a lot of uh, people have, a lot of people have taken the, um, the announcement that the Python developers themselves wanted to discontinue Python 2 in 2020 to basically get, say, okay, we're, we're going to stop support for Python 2 as well on or before 2020. And virtually all of, of our really, of, of the modules that get used regularly here at the center uh, fall into that group. So just for a few examples, NumPy, um, IPython, Jupyter, Matplotlib, all of those say that at tw in 2020 or before, we they will no longer support new, uh, the, they will no longer support Python 2. Um, and in a much smaller sense, we as a CMS team also uh, feel the burden of having to maintain two different Conda environments for Python 2 and Python 3. So when we when when they when NumPy said okay we're switching we're switching off NumPy in 2019 in January, um, we said okay we're doing the same. So um, if you want any new features, if you want to if you want to look at the at new modules or anything, um, you should really switch to Python three now. The good thing is um, you don't have to panic. Python 2, uh, Python 2 and Python 3 are not that different. Many of your scripts might not even have need to need any changes, or if they do need changes, they are probably pretty minor. Um, what are the differences? Uh, I have after after looking at it from a, for a while, they basically fall into into different. Um, categories, which I've basically titled more intuitive syntax, uh, consistent syntax, and improved memory usage. So more intuitive sy syntax means that um, Python 3 makes a more, uh, more clear-cut um, distinction between statements. Statements are things like return or def, which control program flow, uh, or if and um, and functions, which is uh, yeah, which do something on the data, um, and we'll come to that. The, the print statement is probably the most obvious change in this distance, uh, the, in this category. Um, then um, forcing consistent syntax. Um, I have never programmed C, but my wife has, and she is complaining quite a bit that there are 12 different ways to do the same thing in, in C, just because so many different ways were in, in, 
implemented to do a certain thing and to never break back with compatibility, C still supports all of these dozen different methods to do the same thing. And py the Python developers... Okay. Can... Are you talking about C or C++? I don't think you should bash C that way. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, C++, right? Yeah, probably C++ then. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, the Python developers obviously didn't want to go there. So um, that's the second thing, false and consistent syntax. When there were two different ways to, to express the same thing in Python 2, in the new version of Python 3, there's only one method left. And everyone has to do the same thing, which makes code easier to read. Um, and, um, and then they have done some uh, improvement on memory usage and, um, and even uh, speed. Uh, mostly they've done this to, um, we'll come to that in a moment, um, by turning uh, methods that, reduce, that produced lists into methods that produced generators. So, um, but let's start with some, with, with, with the most obvious, with the, with the most obvious change. So in the print statement in Python 2 was a statement. So you can see it's, it doesn't have, it doesn't have a parentheses. You say print and then the text that you want to print. And if you, if you do that, um, it prints that to screen. Now this will no longer work, will simply no longer work in Python 3, you get a syntax error. Um, print now is a function, which means you have to give it parentheses and the arguments that it should print in, in the, inside the, as arguments inside the parentheses. Um, so technically, this statement, if you can see here, by the way, um, I don't know if you've noticed that, I have here two different uh, Jupyter notebooks open, one was Python 2.7, one was Python 3.6. So if I do anything on the left-hand side, it's Python 2. If I do anything on the right-hand side, it's Python 3. So here in Python 2, this syntax technically worked, but not re worked the same way, but not really. Because, um, because print is a statement, it interprets the parentheses as an expression. And um, you can see this if, it, if, you, if you do something like this, where it's a, um, where you have two strings separated by a comma, um, this print statement will, will interpret this part here as a tuple and print it as a tuple. Whereas, um, whereas, the, the, uh, whereas Python 3 takes these parentheses belong to the, to the print function. So it takes these two as two separate arguments to the function and will, concaten will, con will print them out concaten concatenated. Um, there's also, uh, it, it's also it's, uh, a little bit more convenient to write something to, um, to a different um, IO stream. So for example, here, um, here I can uh, just write something to the standard error uh, stream. As you can see that because it's uh, because it's, it has a red background here in Jupyter. Um, you could do that as well as Python two, but it was um, not as uh, not as convenient. So, but that that is probably the most obvious change between Python two and Python three that will probably have uh, be the, big, the biggest changes that you will make. And it's really, really simple. Um, then we come to something where, uh, an example where the syntax has, has been more consistent. Um, there, was, there always was an input statement in, um, in Python 2, but it, worked we in, in a weird way. So for example, if I, if I run this, so input asks me for, for user input, so I can just say one through three, and 
it says, okay, you entered one, two, three as type int, int, as type int. Okay, so that's reasonably okay. But if I were to enter some string, um, I get a name error. In order to enter a string, I would have to type it in, in uh, um, quotation marks. I don't think many people will ever have used the input function for that reason. And there is, for that reason, they have, Python 2 also had the raw input function, which works more like what you expect. It takes, a, it takes the user input and returns it always as a string. So if I type one, two, three in there, it, enters, it, it returns a string with the characters one, two, and three. And if I, if I type hello in there, it will return a string with the four letters. And that these two things in Python 3 have been kind of merged. So you still have the input function, but it works as the, like the raw input function of Python 2. So if I say something here, one to three, even though I entered a number, it interprets this as a string. And I would, I would then have to, to uh, manually convert it into a number if I expect it to be a number. Any any questions so far? I'm I'm, I'm just running. Through. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't I don't see what you're doing. I just see something that is fixed, and you're still on the print statement, and you seem to enter stuff, and I don't see anything that's happening on the screen except your cursor moving. So if I if I go on this, if I execute it, do you see this? Please enter something in the in the blue line. Yeah. No, I don't see anything executed there. Okay, let me check something. Do you want to stop and restart your screen share, Holger? Yeah. What I'm currently doing is I'm logging into the Zoom with the computer, which by now has booted up. I'm logging in. That is to see what to see what you are seeing. Can you just try it and, and sharing and sharing again? Okay. So, okay, that's interesting. Okay, now both of them move. Okay, um, for some reason, uh, Zoom apparently didn't realize that I had that I had this um, this thing open. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, I'll keep this open to see if that, if that happens again. Um, so let let me go back through the through the um, through the print statement then. Um, this. Okay. Um, I think you can continue with just with the input, unless people want to go back to the print statement. It's up to you. Okay. So with the, can you read it there, or should I make it bigger? It's good for me. Okay. Okay, so with, so the input statement of what, of Python three of Python three um, looks like the input statement of Fortran two, but does actually do what the raw input is did for Fortran two. So if I run If I run this, it will ask me. It will ask me for something, even though I enter a number. Come on. Yeah, it uh, will return a string that contains the letters that the the digits that make up the number. Um, so this is far more intuitive than this input and raw input. Thing, but of course it breaks functionality because the input function now does something different than what it did before. If you used raw input, in if you used raw input in Python two, which you should have used, then replace that with input in Python three, and it will work just the way you expect it to. But you can't put raw input in Python three. No, it will not. Uh, Python two, um, if I um, if I tell something. I will say um, raw input is not denied, is not defined. Okay. So integer division. Um, integer division always was a little bit of a of a, um, is, is is a is a complicated issue. If you have if you divide one integer by another, um, you might not always get an integer out. And Python two used to preserve the type. So if, I, if you write three over two, then you get one because 1 1.5 is not an integer, so it gets, it gets truncated to one. Python three, in such a case, converts it to a float. So this is, this is a, a huge difference between the two also. Um, to be honest, I don't know whether I like the new, the, this new functionality better. Um, if you want to use the old integer function, what you need to do is you need to use uh, two um, slashes. So three slash slash two um, rem uh, returns uh, again an integer one. <laughs> By the way, um, Python two also has this. Also has the two. Yeah. 
also has the also has the same functionality. So she, you can use the two slashes regardless of whether you use Python two or Python three. It will always produce the same result. Just a single slash will produce different results in Python two and Python three. Then we have the range. In Python two, the comma, the function range returned a list of numbers, um, which is fair and good, um, except that the most common use for the range command was in a for loop. And if you want to have execute a for loop 100,000 times, um, it would first create a list with 100,000 elements and then go through that list. And even in Python 2, people realized that that was, um, that that was very inefficient. Um, a better way would be to use a, to use a generator, something that just re returns a new number every time it's called. So um, if, you're, if you're familiar with the, with, with the yield command, I've, I have here a little my range uh, method that produces such a generator. And, it, and that would work much better. But of course, it's so common that Python 2 actually has its own generator uh, version of range, and that's called xrange. So xrange does exact, has the same syntax as range, except it doesn't return a list. It returns a generator that just produces a new number every time it's called. Um, and if you want to, if you want to have a look, what's uh, because I should have checked the memory usage, but you can see that even though the the main issue is the memory usage, um, even even so, it's it's a little bit faster um, with X range. Again, this was something that Python two decided. Um, there are two different methods. One has the more obvious name and the other has the better implemented fun me method behind it. So just use the second one for the first. So if you run the command range 10 here, um, what you get is a generator, just as if you were using X range in, um, in Python 2. And just like raw input, X range does no longer exist. So in all your loops, you should, in Python 2, you should have used X range, that you, you should replace that with range. If you do want a list of consecutive numbers or of numbers generated by any Git generator, you can always just use the list uh, function um, to convert anything into a list. So if I say just list of list range 10, then this could, this gives me that give, that gives me my list that I wanted before that if if you want to. And um, here we can see that Python three is even faster. So whereas the the X range in Python two needed five on on my uh, on my one five point eight or five point nine milliseconds, um, the range command in Python three uses just 2.3 milliseconds. As a nice edit feature that was not available in, um, in Python uh, 2, um, range has a specific contains method um, which, make, which makes checking if a certain value is in a specific range much faster. So you can use here the, the syntax is, would be the same. So if I, if you use, um, in this case, I'm looking whether, whether um, two times n is in the range between zero and n. And of course, it isn't. But um, it took it took the computer because uh, because it had to generate every single number uh, of the one hundred thousand because I've set n to one hundred thousand. It took it one point eight five milliseconds to just check all of these. Whereas um, in Python 3, um, 
this thing uh, now runs in nanoseconds, not even microseconds, nanoseconds. So um, four orders of magnitude faster, just because it, it can automatically check whether a certain number is in there without having to generate all of them. Range is not the only one where they've, do, where they've done this. Um, also map, zip, filter, all these things um, used to create lists, now create generators. Um, also several di dictionary methods like keys and values also produce iterators, not lists anymore. But if you want to, if you want to have a list, just put tell it to, that you want a list of this element of these things. Next, next, next is we, we've, we've already said um, generate now. Here in here in Match, I've created a really simple generator. Actually, it's not a generator; it's created it created a, a tuple here. But so what? Um, so in Python two, there were two different methods to call the next value of any generator iterator list. The one so if I create this here, one would was uh, to just call the next method on the generator. So if I call it again, it would give B and then C, or to call next of that generator. So we're going on. So we're going just through the letters up here. Again, two different ways to do the same thing. Python 3 do, does away with that. If I, um, what they do, you, can, you ha now have to use this next. You can no longer use uh, the, the generators do not, no longer have a next method. You have to use the, 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 the function next. Now we come to the nice thing of exceptions. Um, again, Python 2 had two different ways to raise an exception. Either you could raise the exception, then comma, and then uh, a, a string representation of what the exception is, so which would just be passed down, or you, you can use an ex, you can raise an exception um, with the text in as an argument. Both of these both of these methods were did the same thing, different syntax for the same thing. Python three does away with that. This method does no longer work. It now creates a syntax error, invalid syntax. Only, only the second method uh, keeps working. So if you ever, use, if you ever used um, this in Python, in Python 2, you have to change it over to this syntax. Um, the same. Um, the same is with uh, with the ex with the accept clause when you catch the ex uh, ex exception. Um, there were two syntaxes. Um, uh, you could you, you you could separate the the um, name of the name of your, the exception uh, with a comma, or you could use um, exception as ex. Uh, both of these things did exactly the same thing. So Python three did away with one of them. It used um, it only the second method still works. The first one again will give you a syntax error. Then something that that could have triggered tricked you up. Are, are there any questions about the about the exceptions or about anything that I've sp said so far? Okay, so th then there's something that I, I find um, really nice. So um, the scope of iterator va variables um, has been limited. If you can see, if you, if you look at this block here in Python 2, I set a variable i to 1, and then I use i inside um, a, comprehend a, a comprehension list 
And what it does is that the value of the comprehend of this comprehension bleeds out into the into the um, into the, the the larger scope. So you can see before it was one, but after comprehension it was nine because nine was the last value of this of this um, of this inner loop. And that no longer happens in Python three. Um, I does no longer change the, the scope of I in, in such a comprehend uh, in such a in such a comprehension list is limited to the actual um, comprehension thing. And I find this far more intuitive. Um, if you use this, if you if you use that somehow, you would have to make changes for that. I hope you do because I find this behavior confusing. Another thing that uh, Python 3 has done away with um, comparing incomparable types. So for example, here I'm comparing whether one is larger than the string hello, whether a list is larger than the string foo, or a tuple is larger than the string foo. And interestingly enough, it seems that a tuple is larger than a string, whereas a list is not larger than a string. It makes no sense, but Python does something. Um, it probably is deterministic. Well, it is certainly deterministic, but it makes absolutely no sense. If you try to do the same thing in Python 3, you get a type error. It says these two things cannot be compared. You're doing something silly. Check what you're doing. Okay? Um, of course, it just gives me a type error for the first line, but would give, it would, would also give me... If it, if it, for some reason, the first line would work, it would give me a, the type error for the second line. Okay, and now we come to the probably most controversial change between Python 2 and Python 3, and that is strings. Simply put, um, Python 2, the default string was a byte array. Um, so it does understand two different types of strings, um, what it called string, which is basically a, a list of bytes, eight bits per byte, every byte is one character, or Unicode. Um, and you can, in Python 2, you can just concatenate them together. It will, es in, it will automatically escalate this to Unicode if one of them is Unicode. The default, so here, in here, I've, I've, I haven't given it, I haven't told Python which version of, of string it should use. The default is, um, is, is this bytecode type of, type of string. Python 3 has reversed this. It still knows bytecode and Unicode. Um, but it can, for example, it can no longer easily con concatenate them together. It says um, it doesn't fit. Uh, so you get a type error. If you want to do that, you would first have to, con you would have to explicitly convert the byte string to, um, to Unicode, and then it works. This is probably the most, con uh, this, this is um, what I found the most controversy around. Um, and um, yeah, this is, this is probably the, the uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a decision that, that Python 3 developers have used. It's probably a good one, but um, this causes, this caused quite a few people quite a lot of trouble. Uh, it makes some certain types of code much more, much more complex. So um, yes, the, the type, the default type is called, still called string or str, but you have to remember that this is now Unicode. And where this could trip you up is if you, um, if you use, uh, for example, if you get an attribute out of a netcdf file, you have to make, 
this might cause issues if you want to then concatenate this with something else. Like if you, for example, if you want to, to, to append something to the history of the netcdf file, you get the netcdf attribute, which might be a byte string. If you then try to concatenate a string, which defaults to a Unicode string, this might cause an error. So if just, just be aware of that. That's just, this might cause some trouble. Um, that's where testing comes in. Um, Python 3.6. Older version of Python 3 did not have this, but I think it's, it's nice to, to have. Um, it now has a matrix multiplication uh, thing. The, the um, add sign in says, I want to, it's, it's a matrix multiplication thing. So if I, I create here two matrices, um, two, two by two mat matrices, um, because I'm loading NumPy here for, for this. Um, and this is, this is correct. This calculate perf this correctly calculates the, the matrix multiplication. So this is, um, minus one times one plus one times zero is minus one. This did not exist before 3.6 actually. And this is the most what I want to talk about, the actual changes between Python 2 and Python 3. There are some new, but we're now grabbing onto straws for, for what I think, what we need to, what we as, as, as scientists need to be aware of. Um, there are certainly lots of documentation about what the changes are between Python 2 and Python 3 if you run into issues. But I want, there are a few things that I still want to talk about. Um, in order to make Python 2 code more Python 3-like, um, you, you can import certain methods from future. So um, in this case, from future, I import the print function. And that, sh then that means that um, from now, once you, once you import this, print no longer works as a statement like normally in Python 2. Now it works just the way the print function works in Python 3. The same goes with division. If you import division, um, now uh, Python 2 can do divisions like Python 3, where 3, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 and no longer 1. Holger? Yes? Can you do from future import star? And then just have basically your whole script, everything that changed would then have changed? Uh, to be honest, I haven't tried it. Um, I, I'm not really a big fan from, from thing <laughs> import star because you really don't know what happened. Oh yeah, I agree, but. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm trying it out because why not? Okay. Um, I've restarted the kernel because you cannot un, oh, un yeah, of course. Un anything. So I had to restart the kernel. Yeah, mm, no. so that you, you can't do that. Okay, all right, thanks. Okay, so um, a few tools to help you um, to, to there's a tool that you, that you can use to help you. It's a, it's a command line tool called 223, um, which, com which checks whether, um, which try, looks at your Python 2 code and tries to spot difficulties that may, may, may arise. So in this, this case here, I'm, using, I'm just having a single instruction, the, the old time print statement, and I'm passing it to two, two to three. And it tells me that this actually can cause issues. I probably want to use, uh, I want, probably want to use this. It is reasonably good at finding these issues. It's not a, it's not a fail safe method to guarantee to change anything, particularly with comparing types, because um, Python is weakly typed, the program will not really be able to know what is inside which variable, what type of, of, what type of variable has, is, is, is that what it's looking at. But there are other things. So it's not foolproof, but it certainly can give you 
um, a very quick, uh, very easy way to just um, compare these, to, to, to look at your source code, look at all the difference. And it can, you can actually, if you say um, minus lowercase lower w, it will actually make these changes that, have, that it finds automatically. So if, if you have a Python 2 script, you run 2 to 3 minus lowercase w and then your Python script, it will, it will convert all these lines that it finds automatically. But you would probably still have to do some, some testing of the code afterwards. Now, as I said, for a long time, there were two versions of Python, 2 and 3, and, mo and many, many modules that needed to support both, both, both versions. And that's, for that reason, there is a specific module called 6, um, which tries to work, which, which tries to work the same way under Python 2 and Python 3. So if you need to write any code, for example, if you still have if you still have a dependency on a module that isn't upgraded to Python three yet, um, and you need to still use Python two, but you want to get, have your code compatible with Python three as well, um, then you can you look into this six module module called six. Um, you probably I'm, I'm I'm not going into details here. It's quite a lot. It's it basically produces its own functions that then work in a consistent way under Python 2 and Python 3. But in conclusion, um, don't panic. Hitchhiker's guide <laughs> is, is, is right. Um, don't panic. Uh, Python 3 uh, is faster, better supported, and also more consistent than Python 2. And um, you shouldn't have any big issues converting your Python 2 code to Python 3. If you do have issues, um, feel free to ask us um, if you have any specific issues. Uh, that mostly con that concludes what I wanted to talk about. Um, do you have any questions? I hear nothing. So, will there be a Python 4? <laughs> Is that the only thing you're um, I don't hear anything about Python 4 at the moment. Um, um, I suspect sorry, that, Olga, could you repeat the question? The, uh, the question was, will there be a Python 4? Um, not for a long time, and considering that it has taken them 10 years to upgrade from Python 3 to Python 4, uh, from Python 2 to Python 3, I suspect that um, Python 4, you will have a lot of long, long time before you need to worry about Python 4. Um, that said, modules like, like 6 and so on, if, if that ever comes out, will probably be very quickly be adapted to also be compatible to, to ensure this compatibility uh, issues. Um, yeah, but I mean, I've, I, I saw someone in, 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 when I read up about the difference between Python 2 and Python 3, I saw someone ranting about people who write Python code as if Python 3 was the exception. So they, he said, okay, look, um, you're writing code that works on both Python 2 and Python 3, but you, you have think something like, if this is Python 3, do it this way or do it that the Python 2 way. And he, he was ranting about saying, guys, eventually there might be a Python 4, which is not Python 2, 3, and then your code will try to execute the Python 2 method that certainly won't work anymore. Make Python 2 the exception if you have these kinds of things. Um, yeah. Uh, probably eventually there will be a Python 4, but um, don't worry about it yet. Holger, I got a question. Yes. Um, so what, the, what exactly does not supported mean? Uh, my worry is if I have all of these Python scripts for analyzing my stuff and things, they're all in Python 2. 
I can convert them, of course, but what happens if, you know, a few years from now, I want to go back to a paper I wrote and execute exactly the same scripts with the same data. Can I still run Python 2 in somehow in two or three years? Um, probably, yes. Um, what, what happens is if Python 2 no longer supported means they will no longer add new features to Python 2. Um, okay. The stuff that you've already written um, is would still be valid. I mean, Python two, uh, you can make a you you can make a fork of Python two right now. Um, they they are on GitHub. It's all open source, um, so you're free to develop your own version of Python two if you want to. Um, just uh, <laughs> yeah, I, but I meant I so would not recommend it. So um, I meant it but, but all the code that exists will continue to exist. So and, margin. Yeah. Um, for NCI's next HPC, right. uh, we're unlikely to install a Condor environment for Python 2. Okay. Um, so it's all sort of in a reproducible state with catalogs and stuff. So you are able to reproduce the environment, um, but we won't be setting it up it, um, centrally, I don't think. Okay, is it possible to get some, you know, a um, how this is best done? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll take a look into that. Thanks. Okay. Good. Uh, are there any other questions? No? Then uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I hope I was able to make sense and that you will be able, that you should be able to write Python Python 3 code um, to encourage you to write Python 3 code in the future. Um, yeah. See you next week. Thanks. Thanks, Olga.